Welcome to the Joyous Kingdom. In today's video, we have a paid brutally honest review by the Ballistic Freaks NFT, a PvP blockchain game. The goal of this game is to be the last woman or man standing or whatever pronoun makes you feel comfortable. If you guys have been enjoyed the consistent upload, subscribe to the channel, join the kingdom. We're going toward 10,000 subscribers. If you haven't clicked that like button, go ahead and lock that like button in. I mean, what I've heard is that people who like the button generally end up trending up with time as their portfolio develops. So it's always good to just lock in those profits. It's very similar to buying into a project at two ETH and flipping for 6,000 6, ETH. It's very, very similar. The exact same dopamine release and all that stuff. If you're not even following me on Twitter, if you're not in my Discord down below in the description. If you haven't gotten your five free socks, use my Weeble link. What are you doing? Literally, what are you doing? Remember the goal of this channel is to instill the knowledge and confidence it's gonna take to navigate this metaverse on your own one day. So that sounds good to you. Let's get into the video. If you're a company or brand want to reach out, email me at georgeofficial at gmail.com. Let's pop into their Twitter here. Ballistic Freaks blockchain PvP game. Not your average overhyped project. An actually fun, fast-paced, multiplayer, play-to-earn PvP game with playable NFT characters. We have 4,652 followers, 2,000 tweets. They joined in September of 2021. They do a good job on their Twitter page at the at the right proper branding stuff, being funny, doing some memes, doing a good good spread of marketing stuff. I think they do well as far as cultivating a community by the, the way they tweet and the way they don't act like an entity. They are kind of speaking to the people who are reading their tweets at least as if they're a person. And I think that's kind of overlooked in the NFT space. So I'm a big fan of that. And look at their pinned tweet here. They talk about why it's uh, why they're not really focused on being a, a massive, you know, hyped up NFT project. I think it's a good perspective to have in the NFT space. It is generally becoming more of a thing. There are still projects who are buying into the idea that hyped up, hyped up, hyped up, selling out their project is the most important part. I'm glad to see this is where their head's at. If you want to give this a read, probably a good idea. It's on their pinned tweet here. They also have a video that we can watch right now that they released a little bit of a prototype, a little bit of some, some uh, example of what the game looks like. And it's actually looks pretty good. And on their YouTube channel, they also have a little dev vlog, NFT game Ballistic Freaks development in progress with a guy, the developer, talked about his uh, his experience so far, what he's been up to, what's been kind of rough, what he's been having fun with. He's like starting to find a little bit more balance in his life. And I thought that was really good. Um, and so that's something that a lot of people don't really do, especially like developers, gamers. They don't really uh, talk to the camera so much. And I thought this was a really good piece of uh, personal branding and also branding for the project, getting people excited, uh, learning a little bit, you know, and not just in a hyped up video like we just saw on their Twitter, but more of just like an example of them talking about just their personal personal life with it. So I popped into their Twitter just to double check, make sure they didn't have 10,000 channels in here and they didn't. Everything looks good. Everything looks tidy. Everything looks organized. So that's good to see. Now the Ballistic Freaks website page, Experimental Weapons Program. So we scroll down. They've got contestants, Quack Crack or Crack Quack. Psychopath, Reactive Rev, and Wacky Who. They went a little bit into a, a little bit of like the backstory behind these main characters here in this story. And I thought that was really interesting. And I'm actually going to read these because I think it does lend itself. Uh, because if it's just a normal play to uh, like a PvP game, uh, you know, there's, it's hard to. to separate yourself from all the other projects. A lot of projects have this similar idea of just like fighting, you know, last man standing. It's a very similar concept. There's only so many ideas you can have with games, right? So you have to do something that separates you, something that gets people to be emotionally tied to the project. And this is one example of way to do it. So for Crack Quack, an, an angsty, aggressive, utterly brutal duckling. Um, he's, he's had a lot of uh, experience with cocaine, amphetamines, some, so a lot of coffee. And, uh, you know, he's got a heart for violence and no feelings of regret or remorse. He's only interested in one thing, destroying everything that crosses his path. For Psychopath, he's done a lot of experimenting in hallucinogens and uh, and lots of drugs and lots of trouble. And uh, his mind and soul were broken, left as hucks of his former self. And Pat is completely deranged and, and a benefit of the feelings of pity, guilt, and uh, remorse. For Reactive Rev, he, uh, he doesn't have any of these issues or, or substances in his past. He's just... Uh, 
man, he, he just wants, he has no fear. He just wants to fight. He doesn't give a fuck about anything. And he's slowly becoming a standout performer amongst his peers. It's yet to see if the fact that he isn't broken like the rest of them, if this is going to haunt the organization later. That's interesting. A little bit of lore there. And then we have Wacky Who, who's been in the, who's been in the game for a minute. He's just, I guess he was born into it. He didn't really have any issues as well. He's kind of an insider. He's kind of like an insider, sort of like a manager almost position where he's kind of just keeping tabs on everybody in, in the, uh, in the little, I don't even know you call it this, like, group. And he's just, you know, being being the insider, just collecting the information, making sure no one's going off the rails, then he's backtrack, backstabbing the organization. So I thought this was a little fun part of, of their lore. Then for their plan, they have uh, just some examples of, uh, I don't even know, classified material, a little bit of the gameplay, uh, some some secrets. I don't even know. This is kind of cool, though. And their top secret video, this is the video we watched earlier on their Twitter page. For the roadmap, Q4 of 2021, already passed creation their Twitter and Discord, Ballistic Freeze website launch, and their game prototype. Q1, which is right now, map design, character designs, new partnerships, first NFT collection of playable characters release uh, on the 19th of April. Q2, Alpha release of the game, expand developing the team, white paper release, release of the Ballistic Freaks official crypto token, uh, which will no doubt be the currency they use in the game, just like you have like in Pokemon. Uh, like, you know, you can buy Pokeballs and shit like that. Q3 of 2022, introduction to PP battles for crypto coins, establishment of security team, we hate cheaters too. Beta release of the game, Q4 of 2022, getting the freak token to as many exchanges as possible. Ballistic Freaks full game release, intro to the NFT character renting, introduction to the weapon customization, Q1 of 2023, new game modes, community voted updates and features, and TBA. Now, before we head into their team, we're just going to do a quick run through their light paper. I'm going to keep it try and keep it brief and just give you the information you really need to know. But this is their current light paper. Uh, so their white paper, their official white paper is coming out later. But so far, this is what we got. An introduction to Ballistic Freaks Experimental Weapons Program as creators are revealed in the shadows and mystery. An organization with an esoteric agenda made up of some of the world's most elite and wealthy individuals with no loyalties to anyone or anything. They are solely devoted to pushing the boundaries of ethics, morality, and physiology by putting their test subjects through the heinous experiments that strain them mentally and physically, bringing them to a breaking point. All of that just to see what becomes of their subjects in the end. Oh, and here's all the photos that we saw earlier on the plan. For gameplay, it's primarily focused on PvP. Gameplay, the fast-paced 2D platform shooter, will test all of your reflexes to be placed in a free-for-all arena with one simple goal to remain the last one standing, so a little bit like uh, Super Smash Bros. Everyone will start with a default pistol, but every few seconds the arena will get an airdrop, gifting anyone who gets it to be a huge, huge burst of firepower or not. Each airdrop crate will have a random weapon inside. It can range from SMGs, LMGs, to shotguns, or even snipers. Each weapon picked up will only have a single magazine, so you have to make every single shot count. Scroll down, of course, chances to receive a sniper from drop are way lower than the SMG, but everyone will have the same loot regarding of what character is used. We will have four characters. Each of will come with his own starting pistol and perks you can choose from before the game. There won't be any best character. We will try our best to make every perk and pistol as balanced as we can, so there wouldn't be only one used character. And that's kind of why they went to the lore earlier, because they want you to develop a connection with one or the other uh, and choose them. And, you know, not everyone's going to everyone's going to kind of gravitate toward one for whatever reason. If we scroll down here to the post game loot loot drops, the first way to earn money in the game is a chance to receive a loop. Why can't I say this? Loot drop crate after each match. You'll be able to use our tokens to unlock these drops and receive random cosmetic ERC 155 NFTs that can be sold at any time on the blockchain. You can choose not to open them uh, and just sell them directly to another person. So that's also, that's also a little bit of fun there. Tokens used to unlock in the crates will be split amongst the top player pool and into the game's funding that will enable us to support future updates and to cover the costs that are associated with making this project. Bets. You have the option to play competitively, placing bets on your on your wins. Let's say a four-person game will take place where each contestant places 1,000 tokens, betting on themselves to win the game. The winner that will be able to eliminate all the other players will take all the tokens home. Of course, a small percentage of the game's pool will go to the top player pool and the game's funding. Top player rewards will have a public pool of the funds collected. Through various ways, they'll be distributed to the top players every month. Since almost every action from selling your NFTs or unlocking the crates to placing bets on the games will add funds to the top player pool, meaning the more activity on the player the, the game gets, the bigger the pool will be. And so again, that's where the attention is going to matter. You're going to need player base for this to work. If there's only 50 people playing, this prize pool is essentially nothing, right? So gameplay and game, getting users into the game is going to be really important. And because of that, their original thing where they say overhyped is really important that we were not like focused on that. That is a very good idea to have, but you do need a healthy balance. You do need people to play the game, but that's where quality is really going to take over and just building in the space and being able to not put a timeline on stuff 
and creating a community that's not worried about flipping and getting a game out tomorrow. You want to focus on quality here. And it does seem that that's the, that's the direction they're headed. Weekly boosted character. Top players will be determined by the amount of points they've collected. Each week, one character will have a small boost to the amount of points the player used uh, using him gets. So if you want to push yourself to the top, you might want to consider using that boosted character for that week. To eliminate hoarding and make an option to try before you buy, we are in the process of adding NFT renting. Ballistic Freaks NFT characters. By owning an NFT of our characters, you will get an option to participate in all the games played or earn aspects. You will receive post-game loot troops. <laughs> loot drops you can participate in the top player leaderboards and place bets we'll be able to choose starting pistol perks also some other sneaky ways we could reward you but let's keep it a secret for now also nft holders will be able to test out their game pre pre-launch free to try out once launched you'll be able to try out the game you'll get a free character of course not as an aesthetic, not as aesthetically pleasing but you'll be able to fight in casual matches although if you want to get uh, the most of your games you'll need to own at least one of the characters and here's what they are here's a little uh, question mark character interesting and for the tokenomics our game and all our tokens will run on the polygon blockchain to save on our fees with microtransactions and have tra uh, faster transaction times we will have 10,000 nfts 2500 of each character and each nft will cost 100 matic to mint we will never increase or decrease the price no matter how many mints we'll have also the minting process will also be always be open for our upcoming players until it sells out now this is important to think about it's minting on the matic polygon matic blockchain which even the biggest nft crypto gaming people have said like elliot trace ox becker they've all pretty much said polygon's probably the world at least in the short term where we're headed because it's it's so fast it's so cheap and it's just generally what people are using right now who can't afford i mean honestly if you're playing a game you can't pay a ethereum gas fee every time you want to do something and so the polygon network makes sense so that's good that they're rolling with that one for now now let's move on to the team for founder we've got gustas designer solidarity developer visionaire co-founder game developer programmer carolis we have linas community manager copywriter and support we have artist uh, Erte, I, I believe that's how you say her name. Digital painter, game design. We have Pijus, sound design, uh, sound designer, artist, Viva, digital painter, character design. So first up, we have Gustas, CEO of Ballistic Freaks, Solidarity Developer. And if we scroll down here, he's got a lot of experience in marketing, uh, web developing, all those things that are really actually really important that are overlooked. You do need some experience running it or at least being in the industry to kind of know what you're doing especially in the gaming space. And next up, we have the other co-founder, Carolus, programmer, low-level and crypto enthusiast. He also has a lot of experience programming. That's his life. That's his shtick. That's what he does. Game design, programming, all the things. Next, we have Lena Strulia, voice actor, musician, entertainer. He has a passion for the arts, doing photography, writing. He's in charge of the copywriting, the lore, the creativity behind the project. He's got a lot of uh, experience just in the entertainment, in the art industry. Um, and so that's good to see. Next is Erte, I believe is how you say her name, digital painter and Ballistic Freaks fine art student. Uh, just, a, just a college student right now, no, no real experience yet. Just did did uh, get a Bachelor of Arts BA in Fine Studio Arts from Middlesex University, Bachelor of Arts uh, from the London Metropolitan University. And so that's also good to see. I mean, with art, like, you know, it's just like, are you good or not? You know, it's kind of like how you, you, you test art a little bit. Like what's their vision? What can they pull off? Are they working hard? That's really what you look for in artists. That's what I look for in artists, at least when I'm buying into NFT artists. Like, are they putting in the work? Are they building their own personal brand? Do I feel connected to their art? And next up we have Pijus, film director, editor, student at the King's College in London. He's in charge of music, sound design, and this is kind of his life. You look through kind of what he's been interested in doing on his LinkedIn here. It's pretty much has to do with all these things in the arts. And so, yeah. All right. And so what can this project work on? What is my constructive criticism for this project? I would say, man, probably getting out a lot of video, a lot of fucking content because with games, with play to earn games, especially user, like, user base is the most important thing without a doubt is the most important thing to get that you got to get people interested in the brand why are they going to play this game why don't they, why why play this game versus super uh, super smash bros you know besides the play to earn aspect you got to be most play to earn aren't going to get you enough money for it to be enough of a reason to jump over right so you need user base so how are you going to do that you're going to make a lot of video content you're going to do a lot of like streaming why don't you stream get all your guys on the team fucking put up a camera and stream for the next two hours and do that every single week get people excited get them because they'll connect with the people playing they'll get connected to the characters they'll see the gameplay they'll see how it works they'll see you guys having fun i think that'd be the best way to do it i think for any game uh getting a lot of content out there posting on tiktok on uh on instagram reels youtube shorts getting that content out there posting it all over twitter 
and getting people to play the game as soon as there's a beta version out send it to fucking anyone and everyone who will play so hey we'll fucking send you a free hat or something just uh, record a video tag us put it on twitter get people to hear about the game increase that brand awareness that's gonna be my biggest uh pit of constructive criticism in related to helping this project i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you uh learned something if you did smash like in this video subscribe to the channel join the kingdom we're trying to get to 10,000 subscribers if you haven't already follow me on twitter if you're not in my discord down below the description i can't help you fam i can't help you get your five free socks use my weeble link down below in the description you get free money helps me out directly i appreciate you guys always doing that if you want to see more of me right now click on one of these boxes on the side of me until next time continue on your joyage continue to learn and be grateful you're alive watching this video bye